Hello, I'm Command Sergeant Major Russell Prince, the State Command Sergeant Major for the North Carolina National Guard. I want to speak to you today about a subject that I'm very passionate about, and that is the Enlisted Promotion System, otherwise known as the EPS. Over the past several months, I have visited many units and found that there is a great deal of misconceptions among our soldiers concerning the promotion system to include the actual conduct of the promotion boards. While I'm not going to cover the entire EPS system at this time, I would like to address a couple concerns. I have found that one of the most commonly asked questions is, how does the promotion board score my promotion packet? The answer to that question starts with a memorandum of instruction for the promotion board, directly from the Adjutant General. Prior to each promotion board, the Adjutant General uses this memorandum, also known as the TAG's charge, to provide guidance about areas the board will consider when evaluating all promotion packets. It ensures that the whole soldier concept is used for evaluating soldiers, and it is the foundation for every promotion board. The board must consider these areas when building their grading scale or baseline. There are no exceptions. Areas to be considered are the following in accordance with the TAG's charge and AR 600-8-19 paragraph 7-29. Number one, demonstrated application of character. Number two, the NCOAR system. Number three, overall performance and demonstrated potential to serve at high levels of skill and responsibility. Number four, trends in efficiency, accomplishments in military and civilian education, and self-study. Number five, scope and variety of assignments, emphasizing performance and difficult assignments. Number six, duties and responsibilities. Number seven, performance in areas of special emphasis. Using the previously mentioned references, the Promotion Board develops a baseline for scoring all promotion packets. The Promotion Board may add to the areas of consideration, but they cannot take anything away. Once the baseline is agreed upon by all members of the Promotion Board, and it is validated to be in accordance with the TAG's charge, the board members use that baseline to evaluate each soldier's packet. No packets are evaluated until the baseline is evaluated and validated, and no charges to the baseline are allowed once the evaluation process begins. Using this baseline ensures that all packets are graded on the same merit and scale. While not all boards will have the same baseline from year to year, every baseline must meet the TAG's directive. One other question I have been asked very frequently is, who makes up the promotion board? Several months before each promotion board, a request is made from the enlisted personnel section to the major subordinate commands, otherwise known as brigades. They ask for nominations for board members. The MSC passes this request down through the chain of command. Using these nominations, the board members are selected to ensure representation in accordance with sex, race, and across a spectrum of military occupation specialties. It is the goal to have a diverse board in order to promote equality for all soldiers. With respect to the rank requirement, board members are authorized to be one rank higher than the rank of the soldiers' packets being boarded. While I know this doesn't answer all your questions, an enlisted promotion system presentation will be sent out to all units in an effort to educate our soldiers concerning aspects of the process. This presentation will cover the enlisted promotion system from the beginning of the publication cycle, which starts with the publication of the Promotion Board Memorandum of Instruction, or MOI, to the publishing of the Order of Merit List, or OML, for promotion after the conclusion of the board. The presentation will be a step-by-step -step tutorial of the system. It is our goal that through this presentation, our enlisted soldiers will gain the knowledge necessary to understand the promotion system in its entirety and therefore allow them to be more successful in managing their careers. For those NCOs who are listening, especially senior NCOs, I implore all NCOs in leadership positions to become a subject matter expert with respect to the enlisted promotion system. It is through your mentorship to junior NCOs and enlisted soldiers that our organization will grow. I recognize that we have become an organization that is tactically proficient when it comes to executing our MOS specific tasks and wartime missions. But to be effective leaders, we must give the same dedication to mastering administrative tasks, such as counseling and managing the soldiers' careers. 
Thank you for your time and for what you do each day for our great organization, the Tar Heel State, and our country. Always ready, ready teams.